instead of looking at functions that are powers of x, let's take a look at trig functions. So finding the limit of a trig function is going to be a lot like taking the limit of a rational function. You're going to evaluate. If, when you evaluate, you get something out that makes sense, then that's going to be your limit. So let's take a look. So for instance, if I take the limit as x goes to pi over 4 of sine of x, all I do is I put a pi over 4 in there, sine of pi over 4, we get the answer for that, squared 2 over 2, so that's going to be my limit. If I take a look at the picture, okay, we draw in sine, pi 4, we're going to be at this point here, okay, the peak is going to be at pi halves. What are we going to do? I want the limit, so we know that the actual point above pi 4 is going to be square root of 2 over 2. So we want the best fitting point, so I would erase that. We take the best fitting point, which is the point I just erased, and then take its y value. And in this case, the answer is just going to be what we started out with. So a lot like what you would do with a polynomial in this case, since division by 0 is not going to be an option. Okay, for another example, let's take a look at the limit of tan of x as x goes to pi over 2. Here if I try to evaluate, we'll remember tan of x is sine of x over cosine of x, and then if I try to evaluate each of these, sine of pi over 2 is going to give me a 1, cosine of pi over 2 is going to give me a 0, so this is going to give me does not exist because we're going to be dividing by 0. So I try to evaluate, I get division by 0, so I can't get a limit there. If I go to the graph, we notice what's happening at pi over 2. Well, we're winding up with the point where the vertical asymptote happens. So we know vertical asymptotes are not going to be a good thing when you're trying to take a limit. All right. So straightforward trig functions, you just evaluate, see what comes out. Now, we're going to use two very special limits involving trig functions later on. So let's see what we have. I'm going to have the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x equal to 1. And then we also have the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over x equal to 0. So for the first one, we won't give a rigorous proof. We'll just try to get the idea. What am I going to do? Well, two options. One is I can just go to my computer and take the graph and see what's happening at 1. If you do that, you're going to notice what's going to happen is Okay, this function is going to look really nice except at 0 because what's happening here, if I put 0 into the function, we're going to get 0, sine of 0 is 0, over 0. If you get 0 over 0 when you're taking a limit, that always means you're going to need to do more work. Okay, if I had a number over 0, you're going to get a do not exist. But if you have 0 over 0, that means you're just going to have to do something else to figure out your answer. So if I do the graph, we're going to notice just by finding the best fitting point, the y value of that thing is going to be equal to 1. So that's if you can get hold of the graph by using a computer. If I want to just take a look at this numerically, break out the calculator, what are you going to find? Well, as I take points that are getting closer and closer to 0, okay, coming from either the right or from the left, okay, we're going to 0, we're going to see that these values are getting much closer to 1. So you could do this kind of, if you want to believe it, numerically by just taking your values as you drive them to zero, see where that goes, we see a one come out. So that should be enough to make you believe this. Now, for the second limit, we're just going to show up by foreshadowing what's going to come later on. So the idea here is, we're going to take a look at some special lines that have to do with cosine of x, and the geometry is just going to give away what's going on with the limit. All right, so here's the idea. I'm going to take the graph, cosine of x, and we're going to look at the best fitting line above 0. So the idea is going to be, I put in our point 0, comma 1, that's right there. If you take a look at which line hugs the graph the best, it's going to be the horizontal line, y equals 1. Okay, slope of that line is going to be equal to 0. That's going to be the answer. So I have to explain how I get this gadget involved in the picture to get to the answer. All right. Well, the idea is going to be, I'm going to be able to approximate this horizontal line by just taking lines where, what do we do? To get a line, I have two choices. I either have a point and a slope, or I have two points. 
So I approximate this line by using two points. What am I going to do? We already have one point, the point 0, 1. And what we'll do is we're going to take any point that's really close to 0. So the point of the graph will be x, comma, cosine x. We're going to take the line that joins those two points. And we're going to take the slope of that line. So what's going on here, this thing here is going to be a gadget for slope. If I take the limit of those slopes as we let x go to 0, that should just be equal to the slope of the horizontal line. So the limit of these slopes should be gone to 0. And that's believable because if you take a look, what's happening as this point gets closer and closer? Well, if I'm like this, as x gets closer to 0, this thing's going to start swinging up and become a horizontal line. So believable. Let's take a look. Well, what's the slope? It's going to be your rise over your run. So it'll be the change in x's of the two points that I have. My two points are 0, 1 and x cosine of x. So the change in y is going to be cosine x minus 1. Then the change in x is going to be x minus 0. So that's going to mean my gadget for slope is going to be cosine of x minus 1 over x. You'll notice the slopes here are just off by a minus sign. And we know we can pull the minus sign out. Since the answer is going to be 0, minus sign has no effect anyway. So the punchline is the limit of this gadget is going to be equal to 0. And the idea is slope of a horizontal tangent line. Here we're just going to have the slope of these secant lines. Secant line meaning you're just joining two points as the x goes into 0. So now we want to take a look at the main trick for manipulating those last two limits. So here's the idea. I have a limit, x going to 0, sine of 3x over x. So we know how to take the limit of sine x over x. How do we do it when we have a 3 stuck in there? Okay, our trick is going to be substitution. So the idea is you don't focus on the 3x. What you're going to know is if I take anything, say box, going to 0 of sine of box over box, the limit's going to be equal to 1. So we've got to figure out how to put 3x into that box. Now, notice we're not too bad here. The only thing we're off by, I would need a 3x in the bottom. I'd need to know that 3x also goes to 0. Well, the 3x in the bottom is easy to fix. I multiply by 3 over 3, which is just 1. And so I will get my 3x in the bottom. The next thing I need to note is, well, as x goes into 0, 3x definitely goes to 0 also. Okay. If I take a small number and multiply it by 3, it's still going to be a really small number near 0. All right, so let's see what we have. I have my sine of 3x over 3x. That's going to go to 1 as I take my limit, 3x going to 0. And what's left over is just going to be a 3, but we know we can take constants and just move them out to the front. So our limit here is going to be equal to 3. Now, sine is not like a polynomial in that you can't just think your way through it. So what you should do is, if you don't believe this, go to your calculator, put in a really tiny number, number near 0, and see what comes out. So I'll put in 0.1. So if I take sine of 0.3 over 0.1, I'm going to get 2.95. And you notice, pretty close to that 3. OK, let's try another one. So limit x going to 0 tan of 5x over x, where's that going to go? So if you notice in our last two rules, we said nothing about tangent. So the idea is we're going to have to dig into tangent a little bit to see if there's something we can work with. So I'll just rewrite tangent 5x as sine of 5x over cosine of 5x. And then what do you notice? OK, well, what will magically appear, since we're dividing by an x, I'm going to get my sine of 5x over x. For my last trick, all I need to note is multiply by 5 over 5, and then let the bottom turn into 5x. Then we'll have sine of box over box. 5x is going to go to 0, so we'll have box going to 0. So this business of the sine of 5x over x is already taken care of. Now, I have to worry about 1 over cosine of x. Is that going to be a problem? Well, if I put 0 into cosine of x, okay, remember cosine is the x value on the unit circle. If I'm at the angle 0, the cosine is equal to 1. So that's great. I can just evaluate. And then that cosine of x is going to turn to 1. So the only thing I'm going to have to worry about is, OK, well, we have sine of 5x over 5x. So it picks up that 5. 
that's going to go to 1. And then I'm going to have a 1 for 1 over cosine of x. Okay, that's going to be cosine of 0, which is 1. So the only thing left over is that 5. So the limit here is just going to be equal to 5. Again, you should go in, take your calculator, put a small number in, and see what comes out. If I put 0.1 into this, I'll get 10 of 0.5 over 0.1, and that gives you about 5.5. So eh, I don't like that, so I went with 0.01 just to get it sharper. If I put 10 of 0.05 over 0.01, getting 5.00, and then stuff starts showing up. So that makes me feel really good about the limit being 5. All right, let's do one with the cosine limit. So here, same idea. You don't have to be flashy about this. You're just going to have box over box. Now note this one is floating out here. That's going to be fine as long as you get it looking like your limit. 1 minus cosine of box over box. So to fix this, we're just going to multiply by 3 over 3. That's going to give me cosine box over box. The 3x is going to go to 0. So this part here is just going to go down to 0. We have a 3 left over, and you know, well, it seems like a lot more work just to get a 0 to come out. Same exact idea, though. Okay. If I check, I'm going to put a 0.01 in there. Let's see what comes out. 1 minus cosine of 0.03 divided by 0.01 gives me a 0.04. And I'm convinced that's close enough to 0 to make my answer reasonable. OK. Do one more just to remind us that we don't always have to go to this crazy trick. Take the limit of x going to pi over 2, sine of 5x over x. So. You might want to go ahead and start churning out tricks, but note the limit's not going to be going to zero. It's going to be going to a different number. So you should try to evaluate first just to see if a number comes out. In this case, sine of 5 pi over 2, not a problem. That's going to be, OK, well, you loop, loop around once and then go pi halves. Sine of pi halves is equal to 1. I'm going to divide by pi over 2. So I'm just going to wind up getting 2 over pi. Perfectly good number, so I can stop there. So note. Even if I see this, I should always check by evaluating to make sure I don't need to do crazy amounts of work if I just get a number out.